what I'd like to uh, quickly share is um, in this COVID-19 pandemic, you're hearing a lot about social distancing and, and preventing the spread of the virus. On the other end of things, you're hearing a lot about the ICU being overrun and not having enough personal protective equipment and things like that. But you're not hearing very much about in between. And so um, I just want to uh, uh, share uh, what Brother George Cho shared uh, on the Inters Written Canada uh, discussion panel that we uh, did yesterday. And his uh, first thought was that Let's look at history and see what was crucially important uh, for the treatment of those suffering under the Spanish flu. I'm just going to share my screen here to show a graph of the effects of the best science of the times, um, which was used by the U.S. Army, and the uh, work of, of sanitariums, the health centers that the Adventist Church was, was running at the time. So let me just open up my screen here. Uh, host disabled participant screen sharing. Oh, okay. Okay, so okay, now I can do that. Okay, just a sec here. So I'm gonna share my screen. Thank you for doing that, by the way. All right, so what you're seeing here is pneumonia and fatality rates in the U.S. Army and in Adventist sanitariums. And these encompass all those that were uh, infected by the Spanish flu. And you'll see on the top graph that the um, fatality rate in the U.S. Army was close to 7%, and the pneumonia rate was was uh, uh, was 16.7%. And then in Adventist sanitarium outpatients, you notice that the fatality rate drops in half, and likewise the pneumonia rate. Uh, and then for inpatient sanitariums that we're getting on the round the clock uh, care, the fatality rate drops again. So in fact, you had a seven times higher risk of getting pneumonia uh, if 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 you followed the science of the times uh, rather than. Uh, the treatments that was going on in, in, in Adventist sanitariums and a five times greater risk of dying. So what was going on in uh, Adventist sanitariums? Well, I'm just going to switch over to another screen here quickly. So this is um, a little uh, report of a school, an Adventist school in the North, and it was, they had, it was the, uh, semin uh, semin seminary, and um, by the way, there were so many people dying and sick that uh, public school teachers were, were, were dying off, and so kids were flocking to Adventist schools because they were the only ones that had uh, uh, teachers that were surviving. And so I'm just going to share here, it says here, uh, this is a little section here. It's called Overcoming the uh, ap Epidemic. And so this was appeared in December of, of eight, 1918, uh, which occurred three, three weeks before. So this is right in the height of the second wave of the Spanish flu epidemic. So this was the most virulent uh, uh, part of that, that whole time period. And it was uh, killing uh, thousands and millions of people. So basically what happened here is there's a story of, of that uh, there was in this seminary, it was 180 students and half of the student body got sick. So 80, 90 patients and um, basically Let's let, let, let's just read it. It says on the on the authority of Dr. Fred Shepherd, health officer of Hutchinson City, it may be stated that no public institution in the state of Minnesota has up to date made a record in handling influenza, the worldwide epidemic that has swept millions into their graves. Like that, to the credit of Hutchinson's Seventh Day Adventist Seminary. I'm just going to move my thing so I can read this. 
The seminary, with 120 of its 180 students and teachers housed under one roof, was invaded by the malady three weeks ago. Symptoms of the malady developed with some 90 of the, those, and under the direction of Dr. E. H. Larson, a graduate physician, member of the seminary faculty, every person showing infection of the sickness was at once put to bed. So how do they treat them? Rest. <laughs> A trained nurse taking temperature and watching for symptoms of the epidemic. If those symptoms developed, the patient was required to remain in bed. There was what? No drugs to be given. But with complete rest and quiet, a carefully regulated diet, so a plant-based healthy diet, and fomentations applied to the throat, chest, and abdomen. So these were hot and cold packs, basically hydrotherapy. This treatment, in almost every case, reduced the temperature of patients. It broke the fever. It, it broke this, the illness. And in a day or so, they were apparently well. But that did not end the matter with them. The next danger was that of relapse. To guard against this, every patient was required to remain a, a, a bed for two to five more days after, uh, to, uh, two more days after apparent full recovery, according to the state of their flu affliction. So basically, they were continuing with, with self-isolation, a quarantine, as a result of this system of handling a disease that is scoring thousands of victims every day. There has not been one case that could have been called serious or a single death in the seminary, although there were more than 90 persons affected. Now, get this. This is a worldly paper that is just being quoted in this little Adventist thing. It says here, the record is remarkable. It makes the ordinary methods of dealing with flu appear irrational. We will add that we are indeed thankful to God for his protecting care and for the untiring efforts. And then they talk about, about the nurses involved and that the hydrotherapy treatments under the blessing of God. So is it just the hydrotherapy? Is it just the rest? It's calling upon the blessings of God in addition to these simple methods combined is what is crucial here. And so um, it, it, it's very important that um, we realize that uh, these simple things are, are, are the most effective. Now, I know there's a lot of talk about hydroxychloroquine uh, and uh, other treatments. So None of these treatments have been uh, proven yes or no, uh, but medicine will never be the same after this pandemic in a sense that up till now, they have required perfect studies, randomized, double-blinded, controlled studies uh, to prove anything where that is gone. They are taking anything and everything they can, and they're using it first to try things before they actually have proof that it helps. And so uh, I just want to just give a note of caution uh, that uh, with, um, with, uh, with in between, like certainly if you're in the ICU and you're at death's door, uh, certainly they're going to give you any th uh, things that maybe aren't proven. But we know that in between, we have some simple things that can indeed be very, very, very uh, important and helpful. And this is what I think we need to share with each other uh, and to, to press forward uh, with rather than suggesting this uh, herb or that supplement or this or that. I think let's focus on 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 those things that we know is this, the natural doctors, uh, nutrition, exercise, water, sunlight, temperance, air, rest, and 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 trust in God. The hub of all that we want to do. Okay, I'm done. Let me just get out of here now. Stop share. There we are.